signatures have all been restored, cleaned, etc. Now they need to be put back together again. Earlier, you will recall, I explained about in and out holes, kettle stitch, top and bottom, entry and exit per signature. That's a given. So you have one pair of holes always in a signature. In this case, we're going to be sewing on tape. I'll speak a moment about uh, what type, what kind of tape. I have already marked, uh, just going by eye, about where I'd like the tapes. Given that, we will use this set of holes already done, as opposed to making yet another puncture through the uh, already compromised signature uh, spines. So we'll use this line of uh, holes, make a new line right here, uh, and the same for this set. This center uh, set of holes won't be used. Uh, we'll just ignore those. Now, a word about the tapes. Much is said about linen tapes. If you're going to sew on tapes, they really should be uh, unbleached linen. I've used it. Uh, frankly, I kept some around. Now, granted, my storage for this uh, roll of linen tape was in my chemical cupboard. I don't have a lot of exotic chemicals, but there are some uh, things like um, benzene and uh, acetone, etc. After less than 10 years, I hadn't uh, used the linen tapes in quite a while. Uh, I got the rollout and the first time I took it apart, uh, unrolled it, uh, I had occasion to tug on it a little bit and it literally tore in two. It fell apart. I'm not that impressed with linen tapes. Plus, by nature, they're on the thick side. What I've done here is taken unbleached cotton, uh, muslin, whatever, but a very thin uh, type of cotton. Commonly available anywhere. I use it usually as a backing material. We'll get to that later after it's sewn. Uh, I also use mull on smaller books, but something like this, I think it's substantial enough. It's worthy of real cloth backing, and it's very thin. I take scraps of it and buy it by the yard, of course. Take a scrap of it, back it with, in this case, craft paper, very light, uh, nothing, not a thick shopping bag craft paper, but a very light craft paper. And I simply back it the same way as I uh, prepare any cloth for a binding cloth. That'll be covered in another segment. Uh, at anyhow, it's simply backed, and the reason you do that is so the um, it has more substance. It, it uh, retains its shape. If you don't back your cloth for tapes, you're going to find them flopping all over the place. This way, uh, they're going to stay more or less in place, and that'll become very convenient when you're, when you're uh, uh, sewing. Uh, these have already been pre-measured and trimmed to accommodate. Uh, you see they're two different sizes. It doesn't matter. The length matters. You want a sufficient overhang because this is what's going to be attached directly to the boards after it's sewn, along with the backing uh, cloth. Also, uh, which side do I have up? It probably doesn't matter that much, but since the underside is never going to see adhesive, I like the tooth of the cloth itself to be on the top so that when you go to back it, it gets properly good and soaked with uh, adhesive. But again, that'll be all covered uh, later in the backing process. Right now, next, so our tapes are done, they're prepared, ready to go. Right now, 
Next job is make those two lines of holes. As I said earlier, there are various ways of doing it. A lot of people have their favorite ways, and that's fine. And you might come up with something different. That's fine, too. This isn't the only right way to do it, but it's how I found uh, most convenient and most dummy-proof, most unlikely to uh, get screwed up. Take the first signature or whatever signature you want to start with. Uh, this is usually my choice. Uh, make sure in all cases, any time, this will apply to every signature you sew. Make absolutely positively certain you go to the center. If you don't, here's what's going to happen. If for some reason you mistake, and it's easier than it sounds to happen, if you somehow mistake this for the center, sew it as a signature, get it all ready, back it, etc., there will come a time when it'll be opened and that will be free and independent of the text block. That's a bad thing. It's real important. Every time you open a signature for sewing, you make sure it's the absolute positive center of the signature. Now, having said all that, this might be a little awkward because, again, I'm left-handed. Cameras are on my right. I apologize for that. Take a needle. Now, I've made an awl. I can find it, and I can't. That's all right. It's simply a block of wood with a uh, needle permanently um, in the end of it. Uh, I use it for heavy-duty stuff, uh, folios, uh, uh, family Bible signatures, things of real substance. Yes, you could use a... a uh, regular needle to puncture even a substantial uh, signature. However, to do it hundreds of times, which is sometimes required with large books, uh, that can really get to your fingers. So I have an all for that purpose, but for this purpose, I'm going to take my larger uh, sewing needle We'll talk about threads and needles and general sewing techniques again in another segment, but just to review, my only criteria for a sewing needle is as small as possible. You don't want to make an extra large hole just for a very thin piece of, uh, yet very strong piece of thread. Also, as big an eye as possible. Be kind to yourself. You're going to be threading a lot of needles for any sewing. You only work with a finite piece of thread. When you come to the end, you have to join on another piece of thread, and then you have to re-eye the needle. Uh, just trust me, you want as big an eye as possible. And that's pretty good size. I don't know if you can see it quite accurately, but that's not bad for my uh, eyesight. Now, this has been refurbished uh, with guarding and tissue reinforcement, so we want to re-establish all the holes. By the way, this is kind of important. Every time I open and work on a signature, I put the top down. Aesthetically, it's most important that the top of the book which is now at the bottom, be knocked up flush. If, the, if there's any misalignment to be done and it shows up at the bottom, that's aesthetically much better than having a misalignment at the top. So just get in the habit of always working on your open signatures upside down. So we simply find the original hole, uh, the, the, in this case the bottom kettle, stitch hole and then the next hole reestablish that now again very awkward to show but there is where we want our next hole to come out the in a perfect world I would simply go through this way that's very difficult to do 
from the wrong side because it's almost impossible to get through the very center of the fold all the way through. You really need to go through the other side. However, you haven't marked it. You, it's only marked on the outside. So the way I do that is more or less establish in this line of sight where the hole needs to come out and I guess and see how close I can come there you go right on the button more or less so there is the hole you only have to fuss with this once and I'll show you why at any rate for the next little bit oh, that's the one hole we didn't need so sorry about that this hole we need top kettle stitch hole we need and the next the last hole is right there again I will guesstimate see how close I can come sometimes if you just poke through Establish where it really should be. There you go. That's not bad. No, a little high. All right. So there's your other hole. Now, like I said, you only have to fuss with this once. Once you've established those holes, that's that becomes your template, the first signature. You then open a number of subsequent, making absolutely certain you are at the center the real center of the signature. You open a number of subsequent signatures, flatten them out together. I'm going to do four at a time, I think, with this thickness of paper and thickness of signature. As I think I mentioned before, these signatures are the standard, typical, Or sheet. There's a sheet. Four sheet, two leaves, bifolia, four pages each. So you put four of those together as a signature. That makes 16 pages per. Now we've got four sections. Again, upside down, knocked flush with the upper edge make sure you are getting everything aligned center fold to center fold up and down take your needle find your first hole and through second hole through new hole through next hole new hole, we're ignoring the middle hole, and finally there. You can save time. We we had to go through every hole the first time with the re reinforced uh, signature because the original holes had been blocked off, so we had to reestablish all of those. As we go down, the next four sec sections, I will probably just use the template, the same uh, first signature, to establish these two new holes and move on, because these other holes are fine. There's no reason to think there'll be any problem with it. So here's the first section of signatures that are punched. Again, make sure everything's knocked flush. We take the next four, like so. I don't flatten these out with any aggression at all because, again, you want the original rounding to be retained. You want this crimp, this, this uh, tendency to curve one way or the other on the spines because, as I, again, 
mentioned earlier. Just want to make sure I'm... Oh, there you go. I almost messed up. I came close to determining that was the center. Always double check. That's the actual center. At any rate, um, when it's all re -sewed, it's going to save a lot of time and energy if you don't have to actually round, re-round the uh, spine. And there's no reason you need to with something as straightforward as this. So there's our, is that four signatures? Probably three. One last. Try to keep everything in order. It'll pay off when it comes time to. We'll be using the signature marks to double check as we sew. Uh, which is actually why they're there. So, we have four more. Again, upside down, using this as a template. Very straightforward. We find the new hole, go through all, right, making sure we're right in the fold. That's why I squeeze everything together at the very last second to make sure that needle point goes right through the actual folds and doesn't veer off one way or the other. And there you go. Take your template out and go on to the next four. We're going to shut off now and when we come back we will be covering the actual sewing process at least um, once the body, the text block, has begun to take shape and the tapes are introduced and uh, I won't put you through the whole whatever it is, hour and a half it'll take to sew this by hand. Uh, we'll just do the uh, first part.